A, let's read together. Assurance is based on number one, it's based on John 3.16. Well, it's based on the word of God. And this is where you see proof of that. The word of God. Let's 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 uh, look at John 3.16. Let's read together. Okay, so it's based on the Word of God. The Word of God says that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Now, nothing we did to come to. Uh, merit God giving his son. Nothing we did to uh, deserve God giving his son. God gave his son uh, out of his own nature. Love. He gave his son because he was. He loved us. So then what we see here is that God is the what? Is the initiator and the principal actor in salvation. God is the initiator. God initiated salvation. I kept on searching and searching until I found him. No. We didn't even know God exists. We would know that God exists. Had not God chosen to reveal himself to man. God is the initiator. God is the principal actor. It's all about God. We owe our salvation to who? God. Okay. So God is the initiator and principal actor in salvation. Let's look at 1 John 5, 11 through 13. In verse 11, let's read together. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in who? In the Son. Okay. So this is the record. Saying basically what John 3.16 says. This is the record that God has given to us. John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave. His only begotten Son. Past him, he gave. Something God did. And when did God do this? When did God give his son to die for sin? Anybody can tell me? Hmm? On the cross, okay. He, 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 he uh, uh, exemplified that hmm? 2,000 years ago. In Genesis. Okay, all of that, all that's true. Uh, God, listen, and that's true what you're saying. God gave his, his son to die before the foundation of the world. Before God created the world. Before he made a human being. The Bible says, from the foundation of the world, God had given one, his son. He manifests himself as a God who gave his son on Calvary. When he died on Calvary, that was the manifestation of it. That's when God acted it out. That's when God put it into motion. 
but long before Christ came and actually died on the cross, God had already determined before the foundation of the world that Christ would come and die for sin. We can't understand that, but God knows we can believe it. And we can benefit from it. Okay, so, and this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son, verse 12. He that hath the Son hath what? Life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Has, which is has. Present to Present tense. When is a person saved? Matthew. When is a person saved? Hmm? The moment you believe, the moment you accept Christ, you're saved. Have. It's a present possession. God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him, have, the word again, we're going to look at John 3, 16 if we can go back to that. Whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have, that's present. And first John was the same gospel writer, uh, the, uh, the same writer who wrote the gospel, had, H-A-T-H, had, had, present possession, Somebody said, uh, years ago, I can remember, they said, nobody sure of heaven but the one who is already there. That's not so. We can know. Matter of fact, John said, this, the, uh, many other things Christ did that if it were written, the world could not contain the book. The last voice in, in the Gospel of John. But these are written that you might know that you have eternal life. He says the same thing in his love. So God wants you to know. He don't want you to go around in ambivalence, going around uh, uh, nervous, uh, uh, feeling of insecurity. God says, I want you to know. And if you know that you have eternal life, then you can live a life free of, you might say, of, of, of uh, total anxiety. If you know, if you know that you know, then you can be at peace in your heart. And when the storm rages in life, when difficulties come, when a confusion blows, but even though they move you from side to side, they will not move you from your solid foundation. That is, no matter how bad it is and how bad it gets. I know my Redeemer lives. And I know that he will. God wants you to know. He wants you to be at peace. Okay? So, so I did. The verse number 13. Let's read together. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may what? Know that you have eternal life. I want you to know it right now. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. I want you. John was concerned about his, his, his followers, concerned about the church living with assurance. John was concerned that believers be at peace, that they know that they had eternal life. I often say, word is what it is because of definition. The word eternal means what? Eternal. Without end. So if you have eternal life, then you have a life that cannot and does not end. And so then, you know, losing your salvation is out of the question, really. Because I said we have eternal life. And because what it is, by definition, 
He turned on me without it. What about my sin? The sins of the believer has been atoned for by Jesus Christ. But to re be restored in your fellowship with God, not restored in your eternal life, but in your relationship, but restored in your fellowship. You can't lose your relationship. If I'm a child of Ferdinand and Paola, I can ever lose that status. But I can lose fellowship with them by being disobedient. And, and, and everything yet to the point where they don't, or they didn't uh, fellowship with me. And that's the way it is with believers. When believers sin, the believer loses fellowship. Fellowship is interrupted. And we need to, what, confess our sin, and he is faithful and just to forgive, and he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, so when we look at these three verses, 7, 12, and 13, eternal life is dependent on whether or not we accept God's testimony or not. You, uh, uh, what, look, these things have I written unto you that believe, believe, on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of God. And so, eternal life and assurance of eternal life is, is, is predicated on whether or not you believe. If you believe, if a sinner believes, the testimony that God gives, that I give my son to die for sin, if we believe that, then we have eternal life. Amen. Now, if you're wondering and worried about whether you have eternal life or not, then uh, you're not sure whether you believe or not. Do you actually believe, or did you at some point in time believe the, the record of God's Son? I'm sorry, believe the record that God gave, and the Bible writers record it about God's Son. If you believe, believe Jesus died on that cross, and his death was a substitution every day, I should have been there, but God substituted him, me. Believe that his death was a vicarious, what we call vicarious death, that it has to do with, 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 with a sacrifice, a carrier to, to make one right. Fight God. To make one right. If I believe that Christ's death made me right with God, or put me in a right relationship with God, if I believe that, if I believe that Christ's death is in a atonement. Atonement. It's a, it's a price that was paid for my sin, if I believe that. If, if, if I believe that it is by the death of Christ, redemption will be brought back by back. Redemption is accomplished, if I believe that. If I believe that Christ is dead is propitiation of, for my sin, that is, it is a sacrifice that appeased, that satisfied the holiness of God, that removed the wrath of God. The wrath of God is God's righteous indignation against sin. God got a right to be angry with sin. God got a right to hate sin because God is a holy God, separated from sin. And under, under no circumstances can God accept sin or not deal with sin. Propitiation. So if I believe that, you say, well, Rev, you mentioned about five things I don't even know. <laughs> Do you believe that Christ died for your sin? Amen. If you believe that, then you believe that's enough. Amen. Now, that's, your, that's not a mental asset, that's not an intellectual com comprehension. It's the belief of the heart where you cast all of your care, all of your weight, or you, you base your, uh, your whole life on, you bank on this, that I'm going to take my chance with Jesus. I admit that in me dwell no good things, like Paul said. I cannot do good enough. I can I, I can't can can do enough uh, 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 what you call that I 
can't do enough good to be saved. I can't present God with anything as compensation for my sin. There's nothing I can offer him, nothing I can give him that would set me right with him. The only forgiveness, the only means of forgiveness is by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, no room. This is my blood that is given for the remission. Remission, remit, remission means to sin away. This is my blood. Shed my blood that God might send your sins away. That's the story of the Bible. That's the story of the Bible. That's what from Genesis to Revelation, that's what the Bible is all about. And, 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 and all that other stuff that we put emphasis on and, 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 and the church has uh, made a big, a big deal of, it's only in many cases it's Satan's way of distracting us from the man message of the Bible. It won't get us away from the mission. That's why I, uh, 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 that's why I often uh, allude to the importance of staying focused when when and when we have a big day approaching. Follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Like women day coming up. See, they want you to put more emphasis on your shoes. Then he want glorifying God. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. He want you to put more emphasis on your dress. Mm -hmm. He want to put more emphasis on your color. Uh -huh. hey, am I helping somebody? Yeah. Nothing wrong with that, but he wants you to he wants you to to smother the true meaning of the cross with these artificial stuff. Am I helping somebody? I want you to call Delta, airline, to get a ticket because you heard it to the man that the man kind of had you want to sell it in Alaska. And you got to go there to get it because you would never be caught on women's day without that Alaska on you have. Y'all get my point? Amen. Now I'm very dramatic, dramatic about that. But this is on a simple level as well. They don't want you to get caught up in the mechanics of religion. The artificiality, the superficiality of religion that you forget. The man, the central message of the cross is that we witness to those who are lost and share the gospel and know that only the gospel and bring about wholeness and completeness. That's what it's all about. Whatever we do ought to be predicated on our man purpose for existence. And that is the lift up to Christ. Got it? Okay, do we have any questions? Any comments? Yes. Religion is to do a way of life. So religion is a way of life. Christianity came about from the fact that there were those who believed Christ and they followed him. So they called them one Christians. Just, just like uh, Confucius did, who followed, they followed Confucius. Uh, uh, just like any other 
Jehovah Witness. Now they didn't they call that Father Charles Tad Russell. They were first known as Russellites. Your witness was known as Russellite. But Russellite, Russell, Charles Tad Russell was such an immoral man. And, and then all of this began to come up. Russell was, was, was no good. And Jehovah's Witness recognized that that was a knock on the Russell, Charles Tad Russell, Russellite. So in 1937, they changed their name from Russell like the Jehovah Witness. But they still follow the Watchtower, his teachers. Because I'm not, I'm not going to come here and talk about them. But I'm just showing that Russell liked and they disassociated that because he was immoral. So, Christians, the Bible tells us in Acts what was at Antioch, where they became known as what? Christians. First, they were known as what? People of the week. They were followed. The followers of Christ were known as people of the week. And then at Antioch, they began to call them Christians. Now, interesting enough, they called them Christian, and that was a time of belittlement. They called the Christian, it was a derogatory of the wealth. You know, they were, they were making fun like, and really, derogatory Christian, they followed somebody like Christ. And it's important to recognize that they accepted that name because they knew the truth about who Christ was. And so then, as for the Christian, now you mentioned about the change that has taken place in terms of Christianity. You know, Christ, Christ, Christianity and Christian is used lightly now. But, but, but here it is. Even though we, go, we, we use the term Christians, Christianity lightly. But if a person or a group fail to adhere to Christ's teaching and fail to follow him and fail to yield to him, it's just an empty term, Christian. It's simply like me saying right here, I am a Japanese. That means nothing. So the word Christian uh, is used lightly in this day and time with little or no substance, which in actuality is a bootleg version of what Christianity is. It's an all you know. Look at your face. Act like mine. Right? You see what you got on your face? You went into the jewelry store. And he told you that that was real gold. You bought into it? Maybe, maybe it's not. I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> you bought it. <laughs> I got real gold. And it shines like gold. It looks like gold. And Jesus, it looks like gold, child. <laughs> but when a closer look at it, when you bring it to the man who knows and recognizes real stuff, yeah. and he put that little thing and look at it, man, you ain't got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it is, you see. They talk about, you understand what I'm saying? They, they go by the name Christianity, Christian. Even churches, they put on programs and they do all this Christian thing. Christian, you know, come to, and, and see the power of the law. And then we put all kinds of names and labels on stuff. And God is sitting in heaven with that little thing on. Look at that. Come here, Gabriel. Come here, Michael. That's a good example of a bootleg version of Christianity. Yeah. And folks shout, they're falling out. People tell me what a great time they had. And God is saying, that's all official. And what you prefer, that which is all official, that which is real. That which is real. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, we can look at Christ that God initiated and Christ paid for it. And it's also good to remember that in the initiation, God had already determined he gave his son that what? His son was paid for it. 
And so it was complete in eternity. Salvation, the way of salvation, thank you, Sister Clark. The way of salvation was complete in eternity. Nothing needs to be added, nothing can be taken away. Because it is complete. But uh, that's, that, that's, that's what is uh, uh, religion. Religion is a way of life. Christianity is not, uh, technically, it's not a religion. Christianity is a way of life, though. Christianity is life itself. But when, so when we say Christianity, I'm part of the religion of Christianity, you're not wrong. It's all right to say that, but you need to understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's a way of life. Right, right. That's the dedication to something. And that's why we say sometimes, well, she, 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 uh, she lies religiously. <laughs> Committed to rely. A religious lie. Okay, that, that's on, that's solid. That's that solid point. Right. And, and so then that, that, that thank you, Brother White. That's what we have to guard against. And as pastor, I am responsible to uh, uh, for uh, critiquing, for observing, for evaluating. Everything that comes to the church. Amen. So I have to study to show myself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. And since that I am responsible, God made me responsible, uh, not absolutely responsible, but responsible from the standpoint of this is the scheme that he chose to use to bring us from time to eternity. I'm the one responsible for it. Amen. When, 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 when uh, Jeroboam became uh, a, a king, he, he, he did this, he did that, he did other things. He passed, and Rehoboam became king in his state. Uh -huh. Jeroboam's son. Uh -huh. And, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, Jeroboam said, Jeroboam said, wait a minute, he said, the people are going to get homesick. Am I right? Hold up, hold up, hold up. This is what happened. Rehoboam. Rehoboam was king. And after Solomon. And so then, when, when, when the people came to Rehoboam, the king said, look, 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 you knew, you the new king. And uh, Solomon put a place ahead of burden on us. And the burden too heavy for us to bear. Why don't you lighten our burden? Just lighten our burden so we can function better. Rehoboam went and consulted with the young men. He wouldn't consult with the old man. He consulted with the young man. The young man told him, I tell you what, rather than lighten that burden, he said, increase that burden. And Rehoboam increased, increased that burden. And that, as a result of that, ten tribes revolted to the north. That's where we get the tribe of Israel, the northern kingdom. And two tribes stayed in the south. And when Jeroboam, Jeroboam became king, he said, the people are going to get homesick. They're going to leave from the north, go south to Judah, and go and worship at Jerusalem. And I'm going to lose the king. He said, so what I'm going to do, I am going to put, build two golden calves, two idols out, brother, and I'm going to put one in Dan and one in Bethel. And I'm going to tell the people, you don't need to go to Jerusalem to worship. You can go to Dan and you can go to Bethel. And, and, and worship. You know what the Bible said? And Jeroboam caused Israel to sin. Now they had the answer for what they did, but Jeroboam being a king who was supposed to carry out God's order, God said, Jeroboam caused him to sin. Why? Because he made it easy for the people to disobey God. And if I Knowing better, allow certain things. And God will say in the first name, cause them to sin in that night. Because you know better. You don't want to argue my oracles to you. You don't want to place in position to represent me. I'm the chief shepherd. You the under shepherd. Amen. And being the under shepherd, you supposed to take your order from the chief shepherd. You take your order from the people, then you're going to have to answer the people. 
same case with Jeremiah and also with what? With Ezekiel. You follow? Amen. That's why I preach what I preach, teach what I teach, and that's why we don't have all this, all these different things going on because they don't glorify God. Amen. And they're not the purpose for which the church exists. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Right, okay. So, 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 uh, 13. Eternal life is dependent on whether or not we accept God's testimony or not. Not whether or not a person lives a respectable life. Well, that doesn't want nothing about him. He's gone. But, but if he ain't never accepted Christ, he ain't never been baptized, but I want, he'll give you the shirt off his back. That simply means he's going to hell with no shirt on. <laughs> That's all that means. That's all that means. And because the church, in many cases, has bought into that. Yeah. Yeah. The church has become weak. And has lost its authority. Yeah. Lost its voice. Because of compromise. Somebody will say amen. 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 It's better to obey God and live alone than to disobey God and have a whole of about you. Because in the final analysis, it's going to be you and God. Yeah. And when God, when I stand before him, Christ, be interested in this. No other foundation can any man lay than that which has been laid already. First Corinthians 11 yeah. chapter. If any man get on this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, stuff, and every man work shall be tried by fire. Let's see what sort it is. And if any man work is going up, he shall suffer loss of reward. But he himself shall be saved. Yes, Doctor. Pastor, also uh, saying that obedience brings blessings. You want to be blessed by God? You want you 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 want the peace of God yes. in your heart. Yes. You want the assurance that no matter how dark it gets, yes, sir. there's a shining sun beyond the cloud. Yes. You want that? Obey God. Yes. That's what you're talking about. Yes. Well, I wish I can learn you enough. You can't learn you enough. I can't learn you enough. I don't know. Don't even come close. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So I just said to the Old Testament, y'all bring your sacrifice, you bring you should bring your tithe, you bring that. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. If you're obedient, God, he yes. said, well, if you're obedient, they shall eat of the fat of the land. Yes. That, that, that's, that, that's your security. There is no true security outside of God. Amen. And if you want security, obey God. You might want to punch somebody in the mouth, but, but don't do it. Obey God. You know what I'm saying? Who can get on your nerves? Who can do you them things? If they can't get next to you, they try to get next to your wife. Or they get next to their church and they aggravate you. You hear what I'm saying? But don't yield. Don't give in to that. Don't give in to that negative stuff. You keep your eyes on him. And ask him to give you the strength to love every step of the way. Not just refrain from retaliation, but love also in the midst of it. Not just not pouring water on a drowning man, but throwing him a life jacket. <laughs> That's what happened with Habakkuk. The Old Testament prophet Habakkuk. Uh, well, that's the one you might you might be more familiar with. John John, John. Jonah, do you know why Jonah did not want to go, didn't want to go to Jericho? Do you why, know why Jonah went in a different direction? Do you know why Jonah just said, I'm not doing it, that's it, I'm not doing it. And went down to Joppa. Because Jonah knew that the Assyrians, the Assyrians were some of the most white people in the world. They were rude and cruel, heartless. They would take a prisoner, catch a person, and they would take flies, so to speak, and pull his skin off. They were barbarian. They were like, I, I still have no stuff for them. Yeah. And John's thing was that 
Here's a chance, Lord, for you to destroy these people. I'm not going to, they're not going to go there and preach to them. These people are going to repent, and after they repent, they're going to turn around and destroy us. You know, it's like you saying, uh, 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 it's like you taking a pistol, putting it in the hand of a murderer who already said he want to kill your child. And you will give him a pistol. That's why John was that. That's why after the will repent, John was sitting down. What's wrong with you, John? What do is out here? I told you in the beginning that if I preach, you're going to repent. Now they're going to repent. What are they going to do to us? That's why I told them. It wasn't saying that I'm, I'm not wrong. He knew that these people were the enemy, the arch enemy of Israel. And if I preach and save them, then they will come back and destroy us. God may call you to do some difficult things. You follow me? He might call you to help that person who has hurt you more. Who have He may call you to help a loved one who has neglected you all of their life. And have the resources to help you, but wouldn't help you. He, that's the one he may call. You follow what I'm saying? He may not uh, listen to me what I'm saying. Listen to me well. He may call you to care for a parent who just neglected you and didn't do what they were supposed to. He may call you, call you to care for that person who is responsible for much of the hardship you had in life. But I can call us to do some difficult things. You wouldn't have no problem if he called you to love your friend, but he called you to love your enemy and to do good. <laughs> But you know what? As you yield yourself to him and obey him, he gives you the strength in your heart. Yes. And then not just the strength at that moment. Of, you'll grow into that strength. Yes. You'll grow into that strength. I am what I am, not because of any overnight. Not, God did not sprinkle us spiritual miracle growth on me. I'm where I am because years and years and decades ago, he brought me to the knowledge of the truth. And I yield to now, I, 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 just like you, I struggle here. Yeah, I'm struggling with that. But, but he stayed with me and kept me with him. Amen. Until finally, with all of my bucket, you ever know the cowboy trying to ride that? And, and that, that horse just bucking and jumping up and down. But he stays on it. Sometimes he throw him off, but he gets back on. And finally, the, the horse said, you know what? I just want to cut off, stop all of this bucking because he's not going to stop until. So he just. Submit himself and he rules. And some of us bucking and bucking. But God loves you too much to leave you to yourself. He stayed with you until finally you sub like that stallion, you submit. And now he said, I'm gonna take you on journey that you never knew to. Isn't it wonderful? Amen. And if he didn't love you like that, you'll be bucking, bucking, bucking in that corral. But once you submit, they open the gate. You're able to go. I think that's a good illustration. Okay. So, uh, all right. Let's 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 look at, uh, so, so assurance is based on the word of God. Let's go to uh, number two. John 5, 24, 10, 28, and so forth, 29. The promises of showing of your salvation is based not only on the word of God, but it's also based on the promises of God. 5, 24, look what it says. Let's read together. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but it's passed from death unto life. That's the problem. That's the problem. He promised that. Okay, go to the next section. John 10, 28. Let's read it again. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Eternal security. He promised that he would give you eternal life and that he would 
keep you, you uh, that life he gave will never perish. Let's read it again. My Father, which give y'all to me, is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Just eternal security, the assurance of salvation, is based on the promise of God. That great bit is not based on how well you live, how good you live. It's not based on how you feel. It's not based on sinless living. If that was the case, none of us would have it. It's based on God's promise. I give them eternal life. They shall never, I told you earlier, that a word is what it is because of definition. Never mean never. Well, I'll sin sometimes. Never. I know I fall short, Rev. I know that too. I know you fall short. You have to tell me that. You're a human being. I fall short. Now, that, 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 that's not a person who ever lived that fell short other than Jesus Christ, who didn't fall short. So you don't have to go around telling people, well, sometimes I fall short. You have to tell them, and they know that already. And one another thing they know, they know you're not telling them how short you do fall. <laughs> they know that too. You talk to the little bit of a <laughs> Okay, so here I said to you, he that hears my word and believe on me that sent me has present possession, everlasting life. And she are not coming to condemnation. They can't come into condemnation. Can never be condemned. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that may be free from the law of sin and death. Can I come into condemnation? He that become a great work in you will finish it. Kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Where is the redemption of God? Oh, that's good. You can't lose salvation. So, your self assurance is based on the word of God and it is based on the promises of God. The promises of God. The promises of God. Now go back. But, uh, okay, look. You give me verse number 23 to uh, uh, we got 524. Let's look at 523. Should have included that one in there. John 523. Let's read it together. Amen. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honored not the Son, honored not the Father, which has sent him. Okay, thank you. Here, here, what, here, what's going on here in this particular place? These verses encourages us to recognize the clear unity of the Father and the Son. So he tells us that those who honor the Son, they also honor the Father. He's showing clear, absolute unity between the Father and the Son. So in other words, if you honor the Son, you're honoring God. And so that if you honor the if honoring the son is honoring God, then the son must be God. But then he goes on to say, he that honored not the son, to dishonor the son is to dishonor God. He makes a case here for Christ receiving the same homage, the same honor, the same respect, the same trust. That God received. Do you see that? Okay. Failure to give proper respect to the Son means failure to give proper respect to the Father. So when you look at uh, 524, let's look at 524. You see three promises in here. Let's see can we recognize. You see three promises. Okay, let's go. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, 
shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. What is the first promise you see there? Have everlasting life. What is the second promise? Shall not come into condemnation. And the third? Passed from death. So now that's when you, when you read the Bible, look for, for things like that. What does he say? What, is, does this, what does this statement mean? Thank you. You want preach? You want inspiration? You want you want teach? You get your message from the scripture. Amen. Basically, your message from the scripture. Yes. Go into all the world and, and preach the gospel. You get the message from the scripture. That's what that's what a power is. And so then, if you were preaching or teaching this, you'll say that uh, Jesus said, "Very, very, very truthfully." And whenever he says verily, verily, he is sounding a note uh, of, uh, of importance. If, if this is something important, you got to listen to this. You got to pay attention to this. This, this, this means something. When you say that verily, verily, which means truly, truly. And so, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word. You're teaching this and you're preaching it. you teach it, you're sharing it with others. And so your topic can be, uh, what does Jesus say to the believer? What, what, what did Jesus say to the believer? Jesus said this. He that hear his word. And then you're dealing with, that's, that's one point. Hearing his word. You've got to hear his word. Faith, and here's the wrong one here. Faith coming by hearing. Hearing up the word. Hearing what? The word. Then you're going to take word. And then you're going to show what the word does. The word gives life. The word brings dry bones together. The word it was the word of God that created the universe. He spoke in the universe. That's where you get your message. That's how you get your message. And then you have to you do with the word. Uh, he that believeth, so that must be belief. The, the, the word is powerful, but in order for you to benefit from that power, you must activate that power by belief. The importance of belief. You can know it, you can memorize it, you can quote it, and then there's no power. But when you believe it, that's, that's how you get your message. And so you, you, you deal with that. Believe on who? Him. Who is him? Him is the one who still the water. Him is the one who created the universe. Him. Him is the one who told more than stretch forth the rod. Him. You see, you just, just write that message right there. That sent me. Christ came on a mission. So sent me, that's a mission. He came on a mission. And then he sent you. Now you can throw uh, 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 John 20, 21 in there. As the Father sent me, so sent I you. So God sent Jesus, Jesus sent us. Right there. You got mud enough to preach, teach, talk about. And, and uh, he has everlasting life. Shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death. Unto what? Unto life. Amen? Amen. All right. So let's look at John 10, 28 and 29. John 10. Let's look at 28. Let's read together. And I give, you see, Christ keeps saying this. Because he don't want you to make that he don't want you to make no mistake about this. That's nothing you did. Nothing you can do. Not your good living. It, 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 mama prayed for you, and daddy prayed, and grandmother prayed, grandfather prayed. But then you didn't, you didn't, you, you didn't get salvation because somebody prayed for you. I give eternal life, and they shall never perish. Never shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Next verse, twenty nine. My Father will give them me is greater than all. 
and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. You see eternal security there. You see safety there. You see power. You see authority all in this book. My father. You see the, 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 the relationship between Jesus and God. You see him. My father, father. Jesus was conscious of his paternal, paternal parent, daddy, maternal mother. So Jesus was conscious of his paternal relationship with God. And being conscious of his paternal, that God was his father, it kept him cool, calm, and collected. He could get in the boat and go out and go to sleep because he knew his relationship with the father. He could look at Paul and say, no man take my life. I, lay, I got power to pick it up. I got power to lay it down. Why? Because of my relationship with my father. You're preaching, you're teaching it, take it from that. Don't move from, take it from that. It's because of your relationship with your father that you blessed with all spiritual blessings. Because your relationship with your father, you've been promised what? That if you're not, there will be open. If you see, you shall find. It's because of your relationship with your father, it, 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 you can rest in the midst of the storm because of the fact that he is the one who has power. Yeah. Love this storm. And you have to worry about the enemy because of your relationship with your father. Uh, he, your father will fight your battle. And when you go through the battles and shadows of death, your father will be there walking with you. Hey, hang in there, Sister Phil. Hang in there with the scripture. Huh? We weaken our messages. We weaken ourselves. We weaken our testimony when we move more, more and more away from because that's what the Lord did. Then life, life is in the word. He spoke, and, and 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 animals came into existence, trees came into existence. He spoke, and man came into existence. Life, living thing, the fishes, the hippopotamus, the octopus, all of them came into existence because God spoke. It's one. Cheryl, I preach the word. The word, life is in the word. And that word convicts you. Yes, Brother White. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. No, 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 no. It's, uh, John, John said, no man can pluck them out of my hand, showing that God is the one who uh, uh, controls our destiny. God is the one who secure the outcome of our life, which is eternal life. And then in Mount Church, he said that those who endure until the end. What chapter? You remember what chapter that is? Like 20 something, but yeah. What he was talking about was that he, he, John, uh, John, Matthew, is, John, John is talking about how our security and our eternal life is owing to God and it is protected by God. Matthew is talking about the end time when uh, 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 the, the Jews going to be, I'm sorry, Matthew was talking about the time when Pompey, the Roman general, in 62 AD, would come up on, Jer uh, on Jerusalem. And that's physical salvation. Would come up on Jerusalem. And by coming up on Jerusalem, they were to take measures to protect themselves. Those who endure to the end, they shall be saved. That, that's not eternal salvation. That saved that is physical salvation. You remember Jesus said when they were making all kinds of moderation over temple. Look at the temple, wonderful temple. Jesus said that there's going to come a time when not one stone is going to be left upon another. He was talking about when Pompey, the Roman general, would come in. You remember when he was on his way to the cross and the women were crying. He said, don't weep for me. Weep for your children because that was the day coming. He knew that 38 years, about 29, 30 years after he died, 
God's judgment was going to fall upon Israel, and Pompey the Roman general would come in and lay level the city of Jerusalem and the temple. When Jesus said, no stone shall be left upon another of the temple, that literally happened because when Pompey, the Roman soldiers, destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, they took a plow and plowed up the temple so that every stone was separated to itself. That's another word. Reason why we know Jesus is our least son. He knew exactly what would happen. Yeah. And so, you remember earlier in that church, 20, 20, around the 25th or so, 26th chapter, he said, uh, when you hear of this and of that, he said, it, it's like, and, and, and run to be, uh, be, war is those who will be a child. They could die because they're pregnant and it would be hard for them to run and try to get to the mountain to hide themselves from uh, from Roman, from Pompey and the Roman generals. And he said, so it's going to be difficult for the older ones who happen and for the canyon. They're not going to be able to get out of the way. So he's talking about those who endure to the end. They shall be saved. Not salvation, but again, this, this is for physical salvation. Okay? All right. So we, we see here, Jesus coming, Jesus' purpose for coming to the world was to bestow eternal life to all who would believe. Christians are kept by the preserving power of God. That's how you're kept by the preserving power. I'm going, I'm going to heaven. I'm already in heaven. I told you all in, 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 I'm sorry, in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, I think it was 12th chapter of Hebrews, 22nd verse and so forth, that we stand in the presence of God in the presence of holy angels, and in the presence of the spirit of just men made for us. Already now. You see, in, in, in a sense, the Christian, you and I, we are already in him. That's why he said, uh, Peter talked about, uh, we are all priesthood of holy nation uh, 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 and whatever it is. Why? Because of the fact that we are, our citizenship is in heaven. And that's why the writer said we are sojourners and pilgrims. This is not our home. We're just sojourners, just, just passing through. Passing through. Yeah. Well, it's like me walking in Macy. Yeah. Allison, I'm walking in Macy. I don't live in Macy. I just pass through. Come in there, walk. Pass through. Just, just passing through. Passing through. And when I get home, 531 North Magnolia Street. When I get home, I take off the clothes. When I get home, I relax. When I get home, but I don't do that to me. I start taking my clothes off. Me, lock me up. It's when you get home you can relax. But in this world, y'all make me preach in this place. In this world, you have tribulation. In this world, I got to divorce. I got to fight sometimes. In this world, I got to turn the other cheek. In this world, I'm aggravated something. In this world, I'm like Paul. I get so disgusted sometimes with myself. In this world. But when I get home, I'll be able to relax. All the warfare clothes that I had were on here. This side, I don't need them over there. Because what? Yeah, we have a new heaven and a new earth, new situation, new condition, new atmosphere. Y'all don't get what I'm talking about. You got to get that, get that in your heart. You are, you're going to have strength and power. You're going to have joy. You're going to have satisfaction. Get the word of God in your heart. Get the word of God in your heart. Get the word of God on your lips. Get the word of God in your mind. Because power is in the word of God. The word of God will settle every issue in your life. Keep you focused. Yes, Around here pouting and all that. You know people who pop that. Yes, all of that stuff. The word of God will take that away from yes, you yes. so that you can have that smile on your face. Yes. You said this too shall pass. This is on the temple really. Yes. I'm just going through for a little while. After a while, the sun will shine. Yes. Did it rain in your place at your house at, at, at where you live at this morning? Yeah. It rained well. I mean, that rain fell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some did got it, some didn't. Yeah. And that's what it's like here. Yeah, some of us gonna get rain at some time, and others gonna get rain at another time. But I tell you what, that rain only lasts for about maybe an hour, 45 minutes, and then the sun came up. 
I don't care how much is raining in your life, the sun's gonna come out. I don't care how many times you're knocked down. That was a God on your side. He'll pick you up. He'll help you out. He'll comfort you. Am I helping somebody? Yeah, 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 yeah. I get a call. I was trying to go from one place. I get a call and say that, uh, see, can you get to the hospital? Sister Edna Young is not doing well, and they call for the family. But by the time I get on the highway, whatever the case is, I get another call. She's not bad. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? So I get there. And, I, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, where, uh, where Luma, St. Charles Hospital. And I get there, and I found them with our daughter Rosalind on a child's hand. You know, they both crying, they both hurting their feelings. And then her sister came, and they cried. And her, she cried, and her brother came, and he followed on, and he cried, and whatever the case is. But what I'm simply saying is that, that, that there are times when the situation is like, if things gonna happen, they're gonna make us cry. Yeah. Yeah. But thank God he knows the tears. And I heard Jasper preach that thing, Jasper said that when a child of God cried, he said, God is dispatching an angel from heaven and said, go pick up that tear. He bring that tear back to heaven and put it on the microscope. This is why he cried. This is why she cried. And God give grace sufficient to meet that particular. But the sun won't shine after a while. Rock's gonna be able to smile after a while. Brothers and sisters and friends gonna be able to smile after a while. Because it won't last always. I think that's all right, huh? That's what this thing is about. That's what it's about. So, and then let's look at it for the, the last one we're gonna look at is. Uh, be sure of your salvation your salvation based on the promises of God is based on the word of God but then also it is based on the character of God who God is let's look at 1 uh, Corinthians 1 and 9 and then we'll look at 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24 1 Thessalonians 1 let's watch this watch it now let's read together God is faithful everybody say faithful God is faithful by whom we are what? Called unto the fellowship. We didn't, we didn't decide we could get into the fellowship. We were called into the fellowship. God begged for us. Come and get into this fellowship. Some of us were in the ballroom. Come. Some of us were in other places with other folks. He said, come. Some of us were lying and running, doing this and doing that. And you're, Racking them back like 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 uh, Samuel Brown from 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 Houston, Texas, in a Paramount nightclub. Yeah. God said, "Come." Uh, he called us. Did he call you? Amen. He called us. It might happen to somebody. Flopping to do whatever we had to do, and he all of a sudden we get a call. Yeah. It's wonderful when God calls. Yeah. And so it. Uh, we were called into the fellowship, unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ. He is the elder brother and wanted to make us brothers and sisters in him. He called, that's what he called us for. Let's look at uh, whatever, for John, Thessalonians. Let's look at Thessalonians 5 24. Let's read together. Faithful. That, that comes the word again. Faithful. Faithful, let's read together. Faithful is he that what? He called. Paul said he called. Now, John said he called. You, who also will do it. He, he called. He did the call. He called. And he called for a purpose. He that called it, who also will do it. You got it? That's what we have to read the scripture. Look at it. Who, what, what happened? He called. He called you. He called. And he will do it. But what, 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 if he's going to do it, he called. He must have a purpose for calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if he did it, he must have a purpose. And the purpose for calling him is that he wanted to do something. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Somebody ought to shout this, please. That's the scripture. I'm not making that up. You see it right down the board. Yeah. A few words. And the one, he called, first of all, he called. 
And he called with a purpose. He wanted to do something. Now, now look like this, like this, like this. The one who called, who has a purpose for calling, and who said he's going to do something, is And occasion for getting excited because somebody called you and somebody promised to do something to you, for you, is based on the character of the one who called. Amen. You understand? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. If a poor man, and I'm not, 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 not in the derogatory way, but if a man who only have $100 in the bank, if he called you, and tell you that he's going to build you a house. Am I helping somebody? It won't mean too much. But if the millionaire call and say, I'm going to build you a house, that's occasion for perhaps getting excited. Because the character of the call means everything. The, in other words, the value of the call. Y'all remember that? The value of the call is determined by the character of the call. Yeah. And so, 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 when, when I call, who I hope don't come about because I call for living without my hair gloves. But if, if Christ was to stand on Sunday morning and say, I want y'all, it would be so proud that he wouldn't be able to get it. <laughs> Because we play as components. We value, or we determine a value based on the character of the call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, what I'm trying, what I'm leaving now. I'm leaving it to you. Lift up your head, oh ye gates. Put a smile on your face. Why are your soul so disquieted in you? Why are you down on my soul tonight? You ought to think about you being called. Yes, Lord. You ought to think about who called you. Yes, Lord. If God called you, yes, Lord. if you came to the church, if it's because Grandma told you you ought to come to church, then that's something different. But if you came to the church because you heard the voice of Jesus, yes, Lord. come yes, Lord. unto me and rest. Yes, yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. That's the reason she said we ought to praise him and worship him and witness for him. Uh, because he he's the one who calls, he is faithful, and, and he said he's gonna do something, and we know that he is omnipotent, he is all powerful, and whatever he says he is faithful, which means that whatever he says he'll do, he's gonna do. I will never leave your forsake and mean that I will never be alone. On Monday, I can walk with him. On Tuesday, I can walk. Huh? When the sun is shining, I can smile. When the rain is falling, I can smile. Why? Because there is no experience I can have, no place I can be where God is not present. And that's why you all are shout. You all are shout. And that's why, why? That's why it's so foolish. It's so stupid to let people affect you to the point where you become emotionally uh, unstable. God called you. The fellow who criticized you, the fellow who looked down on you, the fellow who make fun, the fellow who gossip about you. He has nothing. He doesn't have anything. I told you Sunday, the message, he hated his brother. And, and you have shut himself out. You see folks go around scandalizing people? And just talking about them. They shut themselves out of blessing. They're not shutting the person who they're talking about out of blessing. If that person walks uprightly before God, then no matter what the other folks say, God's going to bless them. 
That's why it's so foolish to pay so much, that much attention to what people say and what people do. They walk over me and get things. So what? They didn't speak to you this morning. You walk up, didn't you? And when you went to win Dixie, fill up your basket, you didn't say to the cashier, just wait. Somebody will come and speak to me and I'll take care of you. You might help in somebody in this place. You need to wake up and, and get a backbone. Live not arrogantly, but live confidently. That my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but only lean on Jesus' name. Sometimes darkness barely fades, but I rest in his unchanging dream. In every high and stormy gale, my head ain't a hole within the field on the rocks, the solid rock. He is my captain. He is my God. He is my peace. He is my waymaker. He is my burden bearer. He is the one who opens doors. He is the one who closes doors. He is the one who takes care of my needs. He is the one who told me if I trust him and never doubt, I'll show that friend you are. And I'm going to listen to told me all of that. And I'm going to listen to what Joe Blow said. So Joe Blow been crazy and never had no sense. <laughs> Go on and live your life. Live like conquerors. Live like victors. Tithing that time. I'm not coming to church. If I come here Sunday and see all sad faces, I'm going to my house. I will have taped my sermon, and when we come down to the sermon, I want Marvin to play it through the system. But I'm going home. I'm not looking at no sad faces. No more. I'm still looking at sad faces. Feel it all good. I didn't let you come here and ruin my job. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. You ought to be rejoiced. You ought to be glad. You ought to be happy. You ought to thank God for his mom for calling you. He called you with a purpose. He wants to do something for you. He wants to do something with you. He wants to do something in you. And he is faithful. And he will do just what he said he'll do. It's already done in my life. You live like that. It's already done in your life. It's already done in your life. Just tell somebody when that why in the world tell them it's already done. You just wait for the manifestation. God bless y'all tonight. And the Lord, you're gonna kick up from here. Now get you get 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 the uh, uh, a notebook or so. Put these lessons in there. Then go back over them. Before they get stale in your mind, go back over them and over uh, throughout the week. And as some of you signed up for the leadership thing and, and, and for the evangelistic thing, you're going to need this. You know, because when I start uh, sometimes what happened, I told you in the church, you know, in May, I'm going to refer to much of this. I'm going to have much more, much, much, much more. But we're going to grow and get strong in the Lord. And we're going to be focused and pointed, and we're going to have a systematic way of presenting these truths. So oh, put that, don't, don't just throw it, you know, put that in a, in a folder somewhere. Go over it. Read over it. And, and, and when you read it, look like it says, Faithful is he that called you. When you get to that point, learn how to do this with scripture. Faithful is he that called it everything. Not that, not that, that call it me. Faithful is he that called for your name. Faithful is he that called sin. That's personal. Personalize the scripture. Why didn't that a, 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 a blessing given to all of us? The blessing is given to me. The blessing is given to you personally. No weapon form against me. Make, 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 make the scripture work for you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all today. 